all my night shady characters, it's Carla, and I am here again in my kitchen for a very special recipe today. I am making eggplant parm. I'm gonna tell you right from the beginning, this recipe is not for eggplant skeptics, it is not for the eggplant curious, and it is definitely not for the eggplant haters because it is a labor of love. It is for the eggplant lovers. And this is the right time of year to love eggplant. Heading into fall, not yet doom and despair of all of the death and decay, but it is right around the corner. And if summer is about going out and getting salty and sweaty and sunny and all of those things, fall is about coming back inside, turning on the oven, curling up with a book, slicing some eggplant, because that's what we do when we have seasonal affective disorder. We put a spin on it, and the spin that I am putting on it is cheesy, crispy, custardy, delicious eggplant parm. That's the spin. Stay home, get cozy, don't cry. So this recipe is comprised of several steps, not gonna lie. Every single step is easy, every single step is necessary, and every single step has payoff. The first step, I would say, starts before you even get in the kitchen, and that is in eggplant selection. So you're looking for the purple Italian globe eggplant, which this is one. It just happens to be in season right now, and this is not the kind that you're gonna find in the supermarket that is just like gigantic, looks like a huge balloon. Those ones are spongy, they're mushy, they're seedy, they're the ones that give eggplants a bad name. So you're looking for something that's heavy for its weight, which is kind of a good rule of thumb with all produce, where the cap or the calyx um, looks like nice and fresh and not withered and sad. The skin is super shiny and taut. No bruises, no divots, no weird mushy spots. So I'm gonna get rid of the cap and peel the eggplant. You don't have to always peel eggplants in every um, recipe that you make, but it's important here because you want to expose this like outer side. It's porous, it's gonna absorb seasoning, it's gonna have um, adherence to the breading that we put on, and it's gonna be a better texture. So you won't have like a layer of skin on the outside. All right, and then I'm gonna cut it into half inch thick rounds. This is probably a little bit different than some of the eggplant parms that you've had. I think this is one of the best parts of this recipe is that it's not in paper thin sheets because if you're making eggplant parm and you're making this eggplant parm, it means you love eggplant and you want to celebrate the eggplant. And when the eggplant is in those paper thin sheets and then you bake it, all you get is like, what is it? Where is it? Where did it go? What is its texture? It's just like, there's just like wet paper in there. So basically you're just eating a, a pan of mozzarella, which is fine, but it's not what I'm looking for. Once all the eggplant is sliced, the next step is salting. You may have heard about salting. You may have heard that it's like this pain in the ass thing that you have to do for eggplant. You may have heard that eggplants are terribly bitter. You may have heard all these terrible things. It's not really that big a deal. You need to season the eggplant anyway, and this is an easy way to do it. Rather than salting each side of the eggplant slices one by one, I'm just gonna make a thin layer of kosher salt, and this is a rimmed baking sheet just lined with a clean kitchen towel, and then I'm just gonna line up the eggplant in, you know, not overlapping, and this way that side that's going down onto the towel is getting seasoned with salt. Super easy and convenient. Okay, so that's that layer. I sprinkled the top with salt and now I'm just gonna take more towel, put it over and then salt it again. And now that they are salted, I'm gonna put another baking sheet directly on top and this has obviously something heavy in it. You can use any kind of pan, you can use cans, you can use whatever heavy thing. And then I want these salted and pressed for about an hour. What that's going to do is it's going to season the eggplant. It's also gonna draw out some of the liquid from it and it'll be able to absorb more of the seasonings and the oil that it gets fried in. And it's gonna give it like an incredibly custardy, delicious texture. So for the filling, 
Filling is very simple. I've prepared marinara. I'm not making you do all this stuff and also telling you you have to make your homemade sauce. Um, if you want to make homemade sauce, wonderful. That's really great. We're not doing that. So really the only other thing that has to happen for the filling, besides the eggplant, is the cheeses. So I have a really nice ball of fresh mozzarella and I'm just gonna tear it into small pieces. I don't call for a low moisture mozzarella. This is fresh. If you were to use a low moisture mozzarella, I'm sure it would be fine, um, an equivalent weight, but I love the texture of the fresh mozzarella and the way it kind of melts into the sauce. So I also have fresh ricotta going in. This is gonna get salt, pepper. I'm chopping the basil and adding it to the cheese mixture because I don't want soft sort of wet leaves of basil. I just want that to perfume the cheese and this way it's not like yet another thing that you separately have to add to all of the layers. I think if you didn't have fresh basil, about a tablespoon of dried oregano could be a really nice addition. And if you had fresh oregano, also would be good. And I think fresh marjoram, marjoram and eggplant are d really delicious together. And marjoram and tomato is delicious together. So you could riff. So this just has to be combined. I'm gonna give this a little taste just to check salt and pepper. And because it looks really delicious and I wanna eat it. Mm. Mm. Yum, that's excellent, okay. So this just needs to sit at room temperature. You don't have to do anything to it. So set that aside, go get like 20 or 30 minutes under your sun lamp, come back refreshed. We're gonna bread eggplant. All right, next step, your classic, the three-step dredge. You may have seen it in my chicken cutlet video. You may have seen it in 800,000 other videos where you have to dredge something. Flour, egg, and panko. Some recipes, I just learned this yesterday because I didn't even like ever think about it, but some recipes you just flour egg flour. I like having the extra breadcrumb. It makes it have heft, it makes it get crispy, it makes it more delicious, it's more things for things to stick to, it's craggy, so that's why it's a three stepper in my house. The key thing with a three step dredge of any product is in the layering. These are a little bit wet, right? Their, their moisture has been pushed out. They're shrunken, they're shorter, um, but they're still like damp. So you don't want a big, heavy layer of flour. Cause if you have like a very goopy layer there and it's just gonna get like gummy and that raw flour thing and, and we don't want that. Same thing with the egg, like really let it drip off. Make sure that the egg is everywhere because really the flour is there to give the egg something to stick to. So you want it like evenly coated, but not gloopily coated. And then I'm using panko because I like their texture. If you wanted to use a different kind of breadcrumb, mazel to you. Just don't use a seasoned breadcrumb, please. And going all around, and then you have a perfectly breaded slice of eggplant and perfectly breaded fingers as well. If I had a choice between being like a smooth and shiny entity or like a crispy craggy entity, I would always choose craggy. Get in there. Nuggets, crannies, nooks, all of the things. Once you really start getting going, you can do more than one piece at a time. I think I tried to be generous in this recipe with the panko because if you have exactly the right amount of breadcrumb when you get to the last couple slices, it's just a challenge to get it on there. This is a really good thing to do with a friend or a partner or someone that you're planning to feed and you would get through it a little bit faster or put on a great podcast. Have you listened to Borderline Salty yet? It's really awesome food Q&A podcast I do with my friend Rick Martinez or watch some bad TV, which is really good TV. I'm currently watching Love Island with my 13 year old, which is wildly inappropriate. So do those things. And then before you know it, you'll have your eggplant done. This is the fry step. I am choosing olive oil for this step. And it could be a controversial choice because I'm gonna go through about a cup of olive oil, which is expensive stuff. 
Let's be honest. You don't have to use your very top end, top, top, top olive oil, most expensive. Don't use that. Just make sure it's extra virgin. And because I'm not frying at a super high temperature, the flavor of the oil really becomes part of the dish. So I truly do think it's worth it. So I'm over medium heat just to get things going and to check if the oil is hot enough, I'm just dropping a little bit of the breadcrumb in there. They should float start to like very energetically bubble right away. And that is what they're doing. Get out your biggest skillet for this. You could get two going at the same time. Remember that friend who you had over for breading the eggplant, also a great time to bring somebody else into it. Or just meditate on the repetition of making perfectly golden brown discs of delicious breaded eggplant. That's what I do. Just zone out. Sorry, kids. Mom can't play. Mom is staring at discs of olive oil. Sorry, guys. Homework. Can't do it with you. Not me. I have to stare at this eggplant for an hour. Carla. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I was just thinking about every time I ignored my children because I was had to cook something. Okay, this is exactly what you're looking for. This, it smells like olive oil in here and this kind of beautiful tawny chestnut brown is the color that guy's not ready this guy was ready though and that's really normal that some are going to they're going to cook at slightly different rates it's a process and you want to get it want to get it right but these look very beautiful mm-hmm gorgina oh my god well these look great as i'm taking them out i have paper towel on top of a cooling rack on top of a rimmed baking sheet. And I like the cooling rack for just a little bit more air circulation, helps them cool down faster. It is not required. I think the key thing would just be to put them down on some paper towel. The reason I wanna get more eggplant in as I'm taking some eggplant out is if I take all of the eggplant out, the heat in the pan is gonna spike. The best rhythm to be in is like, a guy is coming out, a guy is going in, your oil is never scorching or smoking. And this way it does go fairly quickly. End of the road here. The eggplant are pretty much cooked through at this point, and I do enjoy sort of midway through my work sesh to enjoy a disc of eggplant because later they're going to get saucy and gooey and soft and creamy. So this is like a, a, just a moment to have a little eggplant cutlet before you move on. This next part is hard for me and I know this about myself. I have a hard time with layers that repeat that have multiple elements into the layers. So I have my book and I'm gonna try to figure it out. I know that the first layer is sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead with that and it's about a cup of sauce. And this is just so the eggplant doesn't stick to the bottom and it just makes like a saucy situation in the bottom of the pan. Okay. And then there's layers that repeat in the same order and we're gonna go through it together. Eggplant, sauce, parm, mozzarella, and in high school, I used to come up with mnemonic devices to memorize everything so that I could immediately forget them the next day. So the mnemonic device for us is gonna be E S P M, a new sports channel for mozzarella. E S P M E. <laughs> I'm gonna use the smaller slices to fill in some of my gaps, but it's okay to have gaps. This is a dollop situation. S. <laughs> oh, this is a good, this is one of the good layers. And there's three layers, so I'm eyeballing like a third of everything, but I'm actually just taking what seems right. E, S, P, M, and now we go back to E. I'm gonna stagger I'm not gonna put the pieces directly on top of each other. I'm gonna kind of offset them. And that way, all the boublage and the sauce can like have a, a channel to flow through. 
because we don't want to squash their like rivulets and their cheese and sauce geysers have to be left open for steam to escape, for sauces to rise, for bubbling to happen, for molten cheese to like lava its way to the top layer. E. <laughs> S. looks amazing. Oven is at 350. I am gonna take some foil, lightly zhuzh it up so we don't have sticking. So the first phase of baking is gonna be covered. And that's important because we want to trap all the delicious saucy moisture, the moisture coming off the cheese, the moisture coming out of the eggplant slices, like everything in there is gonna get saucy and steamy and delicious, bubbly. Have a safe and peaceful journey. It's been about 50 minutes and it's time to reveal. I'm gonna turn the broiler on. And at this point I'm looking for cheese melted, sauce is nice and hot, things are bubbling. Yum. The parm should look very like together at this point. Molten cheese, saucy, Delicious. I also want to check it just for tenderness. So if you have a cake tester or any like skewery thing, just going in there, passing through. Once the skewer comes out, it'll kind of tell you if it's hot all the way to the middle. Woo, and it is. <laughs> all right, now that the broiler's on, it's the final lap here. And we're just going to a crispy top place, browned in spots. Marge came for Parm. <laughs> Marge, Marge Parm. Marge Parm. <laughs> oh yeah. Aw. Does Marge want to give it just a little aroma? Yeah. Let's but. get a little nose work on this. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> this smells good. <laughs> as tempting as it is to cut into this right away, you need to let it chill for a minute. It's a little bit like a lasagna or anything layered and baked for a long time. If you cut into it the minute it comes out, you're gonna get a lot of cheese rivers and a lot of sliding around and you don't want that. So just let it, just let it come back together. I would like you to wait 30 minutes. If you could wait at least 10, that would be wonderful. It's time to celebrate. If you live alone, you are going to have just a bountiful amount of future freezer meals. And if you live with other people, you're about to make them so incredibly happy. And if you're going to a potluck, you're gonna win. So th there's really something for everyone here. And I just wanna say it's worth it. This whole thing is worth it. Ooh. I mean. So this is, would be lovely with a green salad. Do I have a green salad? No, I don't. <laughs> am I just gonna enjoy it in its spectacularness? Yes, I am. Guys, <laughs> it's like the royal wedding of what you could do to an eggplant. See how you can see the eggplant and it isn't all flattened down into like individual paper leaves of eggplant. There's like nice cutlets of eggplant in there. You're worth it. I'm worth it. The eggplant was worth it. Your time is worth it. Your weekend is worth it. It's oven season. It's just eggplant extravaganza. It is for me and it is for you. And you want this in your house. You need this in your house. Go get this in your house.